Alrighty, folks, Troy with V Twins with V8s. I'm back. Um, we already have our first two segments of our uh, rebuilding the small block done. We had, went through disassembly, talked to you about all the machine work and everything we did, and then we uh, we went through the whole process of installing the, can the crankshaft and setting the bearing clearances and checking the end play and everything. So we have our block sitting here. It's nice and clean still. We got our fresh crank all installed. Now the next thing we want to do is, is uh, put some pistons in here. And uh, this kind of poses a little bit of a dilemma for me because what had happened was the, uh, the machine shop that I use kind of did me a favor and they put all of the rings on the pistons. So generally what I would like to do would be to take the rods and pistons that are assembled with no rings on them, put them into the cylinders, and then go through the process of checking my, my bearing clearances on my rod journals with plastic gauge. Exactly the same thing as we did with the mains, only we do that with, the, uh, with all the rods with no rings on the pistons, and uh, it's easier to take them in and out and, and check everything. But unfortunately, that's not the case. And I don't want to fiddle around with those rings and try to take a back off the piston without bending a ring, cracking a ring, scratching a piston, whatever. So it just, just doesn't make any sense for me. What I do have is, is I have the pistons that, have, that were taken out of this engine. Obviously, they are 30,000, it's too small. But I can demonstrate everything with you that we would do as far as setting up the ring end gap and, and getting all the rings um, ready to go into the engine. I can show you how to put the rings on the pistons. That's what I'm gonna do with you right now. So I have a piston here that, uh, that came out of this engine and uh, it's got no rod on it. And it's got, it doesn't have any rings on it either. And uh, it'll be a little bit different depending upon if you have pressed in um, wrist pins, then you'll get your pistons and rods will be together from the machine shop because they have to be heated and pressed together. If you have full floating pins, there'll be a C-clip on either side of this piston that will come out and allow the wrist pin to slide out. You'll put your rod in there, you'll slide it together, and you'll put your C-clips in, and you'll be good to go. So you can have your piston either with the rod or without the rod when you go to assemble it. So what, we're gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you do a ring installation. And the first thing that we have to do when we get a set of rings is we have to size them to the bore and make sure that the end gap is correct. Okay, so to do that, we take our two top rings of what we're going to want to size. I'm just going to grab one of them, and we'll surmise that this is a fresh ring and we want to check the end gap. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to insert that piston ring inside of our cylinder. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze, pull this thing in nice and easy like this. I don't want to jam up my cylinder. Now you want the... Um, we want the ring to be square in the cylinder, so what we do is we take the piston and we set it on the cylinder like this, and we, um, we slide the ring down into the cylinder so it's nice and even all the way around. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take a feeler gauge and we're going to check the gap on the end of the ring to make sure it's in spec. Now you do have to remember that this block has been third, uh, bored 30 thousandths oversize, and um, these pistons are 30 thousandths too small for this engine right now. But, I, but I'm going to do this for you for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to bring the camera over and I'm going to show you how I have the ring in the cylinder and how we check the uh, end gap with the feeler gauge. Okay, so now you can see I've got my piston ring in the block. I've got it evened out in there because I used my piston to, um, to set it in there. Then we would take our feeler gauge and we would put it in between the ends of this ring gap. Notice how big it is now, because it's the wrong ring for the block. But this would be exactly how you do it. So you check this, and then you check it to spec. Then you go to your, your specifications, whether you're doing a Chevy, a Ford, or whatever, and see what your ring end gap is gonna be. At that point, you make your decision whether you're in spec and you can go ahead and just install the rings, or if they need to be filed. Now, if these rings need to be filed, to be within spec, and you're going to file them by hand, which you can do, you always want to make sure that you file towards the center of the piston, or should I say, away from the surface that rides 
on the cylinder walls. And then once you're done filing it, what you want to do is you want to feel it, make sure there's no burrs on there. You might want to take a fine piece of emery and just sand the little edges just to make sure you don't have any burrs. Then you put it back in the cylinder, use the piston to get it centered, and you check it again with your feeler gauge. And you do that with every set of compression rings. There's going to be two for each cylinder, and um, you would check it for each one. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do each ring for each cylinder because these are fresh from the machine shop. In theory, they're going to be exactly the same size. But what you're going to want to do is you want to check each set of rings. Okay, once you have that all done, then your rings are ready to install on the piston. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the ring installation works. Once again, I, all I have is my piston like this. So what I'm going to do, generally you would have it on the rod, and you take your rod and put it in the vise to hold your piston like this. So I've got to come up with something, or I've got to probably, I'm going to take and put this piston in a vise because it's junk I'm not going to use it anyway and I'll show you how to put the rings on. Okay folks so I got what I did was I put the um, piston in the vise you'd have it clamp with the rod in a rag to hold it like this. Now I just did it like this so that you can see it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you you're going to work from the bottom up so the first thing we want to put on is our oil expander ring so there's going to be there's actually three pieces to your oil ring there's this wavy expander and then there's your two actual oil control rings so what you're going to do first is you're going to put your the expander ring on and on the end of this expander ring there's two little tangs if you look at it hopefully I can get it right for you it's all wavy and there's a little tang here and a little tang there they butt together like this you don't want them to be overlapped or anything like that, otherwise they're not going to expand your other rings and work properly. So when you put this together, make sure that this is um, butted together. All right. So you got it butted together. You put it in here. You get it butted together like that, so you know where you're at. Now this one's. These are going to act a little weird because the simple reason is is that I have uh, expanded them and taken them off. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to take one of your oil, oil rings and you're going to take that and you're going to walk that over your other ring. Hold this together, put this on here like this, walk this right around just like I got it, just like this, right to the other side. There you go. Now what you'll notice is, is as you're walking this thing on here, it, it's going to want to fight with you. You just got to fiddle with it. Now, what I do have right now, and it, it's just, I got it wrong because I, ha I did this for you guys here on the camera, is what I did have is, is I have my oil ring on the bottom positions in the, at the same spot as my joint. Okay, so let's what you're going to want to do is you want to take your oil expander, you're going to want to have it on the top. You're going to take your, uh, your first ring, the gap of that ring is going to be 45 degrees from the center line, and then your other ring is going to be 45 degrees the other way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it, I'm going to walk this one here on, And I got a 45 degrees the other way. Now you'll notice how expanded my rings are. Everything's good. I look at my two little tabs that I've got right here. They're butted up against each other. I've got one ring end gap here, and I've got one ring end gap over there. I don't want them together. I don't want any of these three together, and I don't want them to be corresponding with the wrist pin bore. Okay, so now we've got our oil ring on. The next thing we're going to do is going to put our next ring on. Now I got my two other rings over here. You're going to have two different kind of rings. Now what I have is I have my two compression rings. Now these are different. Now when you look in your ring set and open it up, it's going to tell you which ring is going to be the top one, which ring is going to be the bottom one. There'll also be an indication on there, like this set of rings right here has a little dimple on it. I don't know if you can see it. 
the dimples face up. Lots of times they'll be stamped and it'll say top, bottom, things of that nature. Make sure you have the right ring in the right spot. Now, I, what I have is I have a set of ring expanding pliers like this. What happens is, is you take your ring like that, you put it inside the plier like this, and you squeeze it and it opens it up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up our ring by squeezing our pliers, we're gonna get this thing on, and when we have it in the right groove that we want it in, we're gonna release it, and voila, there's our ring. Now, notice right now, my ring gap is facing here, 90 degrees from the wrist pin bore. That's perfect, that's what we want. My little tab, little dot is facing up. I get my second ring, I put it on my ring expander like this, this one is gonna be 90 degrees from the other one. I'm gonna open this up, I'm gonna put my ring on, make sure I'm in the groove, and now I got one end gap on this side, one end gap exactly opposite on that side. So to recap this, I got my oil groove facing directly out, I got one oil ring 45 degrees one way, the other oil ring 45 degrees the other way. My first compression ring, the gap is facing straight up, my second compression ring, the gap is facing straight back. And at that point, you've got a piston and a set of rings that's ready to rock and roll.